Ready? Here we go. Okay. Hey, welcome to the 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show. Um, we're doing another interview today. We had a, a great opportunity to interview a senior Scrum Master coach, uh, Krishna Amapur. He's from Bangalore. And yeah. we're going to sit with him. We're going to talk to him a little bit. We're going to learn about him. Um, he's a uh, Scrum senior Scrum Master um, servant leader, leader that I like to call a a builder of agile mindset because i was talking to him the other oh, day Oh, thank you <laughs> you're welcome um again this is not the classic like job interview thing this is so that we can get the meet another scrum master as a coach someone in the agile community it's like everyone else that watches this show and the same kind of about not someone we're not worried about the ones that have been here for 20 30 years maybe one day we'll have some interviews like that but you know we'll, who we are as a group of people and just have them share <clears throat> what do you would like to share with the Agile Scrum world here on 5 a.m. Master Scrum? So welcome. Oh, thank you so much, Greg. Yeah, it's great. Great having you. Um, so yesterday I was doing uh, one of my 5 a.m. Master Scrum shows and you reached out in the comment that you'd like to do the interview. And then uh, we did a quick Zoom session, right? And yes, yes, next certainly. thing you know, yeah. we're doing this. So what made you want to do this interview? Okay. Um, well, actually, uh, I was in, like, in fact, I was I was going through uh, the, you know the other scrum master who got I think interviewed in Auckland, right? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's in, in New Zealand. Yeah, in New Zealand, actually. Edwin. And in fact, even even I also do a lot of scrum master interviews. Even I get in case if I'm looking out for a job, even I do I'll get interviewed by a lot of uh, other senior folks. Mm -hmm. But uh, the kind of questions that you asked him. Um, it re I really liked it the way that that you put some questions like uh, you know uh, tell me some of the facilitation you know, facilitation techniques that you have used to facilitate some of your um, scrum ceremonies and what do you do outside office or uh, like outside of your office hours with the, you know you know uh, you know like apart from doing scrum master job I said uh, that really I I I felt that you know what I need to uh, get evaluated and and also um, <clears throat> As is my knowledge on Agile and Scrum uh, with the senior folks like you, I thought, uh, so immediately I just uh, sent you a, a message saying that, hey, you know what, even I would like to get interviewed because I just don't know what the current industry expectations are at this point of time. And uh, I thought, okay, let me try to have a mock interview and just try to evaluate myself and see what are the areas of improvement that I have to uh, do moving forward. And guess what is that I'm good at? Probably, of course, you can evaluate me later on if you want. And that, uh, that the kind of questions that you put was really, really apt for a, a scrum master role or, uh, and the people who are, who are, who are really looking into a for, you know, for, senior, uh, for senior scrum masters. So that made me to reach you. And then cool. here we are the next day, um, you are taking my interview. Well, great. Well, it's, I, I appreciate it. We had a great conversation because we did the Zoom because I like to kind of have a little conversation before, make sure how things are set up and, and just have that initial uh, conversation. So I thought it was great. I'm like, some of the stuff we talked about the other day, I wish we recorded and I would love to have shared it with everybody. Um, so we'll, we'll hit some of those points too. Now, Krishna, let's <laughs> talk about your experience in becoming, I like to type, Senior Scrum Master Coach. You know, how did you find your way to be a coach? Tell us a little bit about your journey, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, in fact, uh, uh, being a coach, actually, this is what I personally feel, that you should be a really a people-oriented person. Um, and in fact, my journey to this is, uh, I never knew that I had my inherent skills of uh, helping people solve their problems um, uh, like on their own. And in fact, uh, way back in 2016, 15, 16, I met one of my coach, uh, one of my coach, by name Ramnath uh, Kashikar, who is also uh, like working in one of the IT firm for for some project related issues. And then, um, uh, and then really, uh, while I was discussing with him, and I, I, I like I went to him with a specific kind of a problem, and uh, he tried to. Uh, ask me some powerful questions, which I normally used to do it with my kids and also with my relatives and also with my other colleagues. Then, um, then I said, hey, you know what? Uh, you seem to be uh, a coach by yourself, which you don't know about it. Oh, is that so? I, in fact, I never knew that I had that kind of a skill set. 
So later on, I started engaging with him um, a number of times, and uh, we uh, we also go to a lot of meetups uh, with, you know, like, like especially in Bangalore, there are a lot of agile meetups. And um, also, I did my recent um, um, uh, coaching or NLP. I think you have heard of NLP, right? You know, linguistic programming. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one of the NLP Academy has that NLP coach, and uh, so I did my certification there as well. And I felt that you know I really like to help people. Um, in fact, in, in fact, uh, he is in fact Ramnath is my uh, coach as well as a mentor, and he has. Uh, I felt that hey, you know what? I should really um, help other people who are in trouble, who cannot solve the problems of all by themselves. I think they need somebody who can, uh, you know, like who can help and guide them across. So that's the journey it started off from 2016 onwards, and that's where I am here. And I love the thing that I do. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's a uh, because actually a scrum master himself is a coach actually. Yeah, He's yeah, they are. They, they they forget that little skill. I always I had the same thing where I was scrum master for a while. Got my team. They they I didn't need to teach about daily scrum every day or the ceremonies. They had that down. So my question was, what's the next level? And that was the coaching side, right? Exactly. And because I coach the POs, I coach the management, I coach the team. Yeah. So that's the reason Scrum Masters coach. So yeah, yeah. that's how my journey is. And yeah. still it's continuing. I don't say I'm done with it. It's a lot of learnings. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, it never ends, right? So so you yeah, mentioned the, um, your coach's network and you kind of mentioned a little bit there. You have some agile groups and you started your own little network. Like you started where you were engaging with other coaches. Why did you start that network, that personal network, and how did you start it? And is it and is it fun? Do you enjoy it? Mm-hmm. It's a good question. In fact, I would just try to put this in a different way. Mm. Uh, say, I have a dollar, and you have a dollar, right? So if we both get together and start exchanging some of the ideas, so we both are going to be valued much more than two dollars, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, what I've how would I start off with, uh, especially you know, with with, you know, with uh, uh, you know, getting into a lot of uh, agile meetups, wherein um, I you know where a lot of people come in. There are some keynote speakers who come and talk about their past experiences. It's not only with respect to agile; it's it's, it's respect to uh, you know, like with a lot of things. So, how I started off with this? Yes, again, my coach, Mr. Ramnath, is the one who uh, who took me to a lot of uh, like you know, like meetups. And he made me to network myself with with a lot of other people as well. So in that way, uh, I I personally feel that um, sharing is caring is is what I personally believe in. So that's when I, I felt, hey, you know what, uh, uh, getting into and 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 building my own network of coaches, trying to trying to share some of my challenges that I have. And in fact, what I do is it's not only my challenges; I also hear from their challenges. And try to give some of my, you know, you know, like perspective as well. So it's really fun because uh, you you get to learn a lot of things. Which, I, because it's not that it's not only my view. In fact, even I try to try you know, to talk to my other coaches and 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 let them know, you know, what this is what I did it during um, the day. Is it mm-hmm. right or wrong? Of course, it's right or wrong. But what could be done? You know, what could have been done better? So I felt that hey, you know what? Yes, um, uh, it's really fun. And plus, I love to unlearn and learn new things on a daily basis. So it's just so. So what you're saying is just kind of fun, just learning from other agile coaches, exchanging his thought <laughs> process. You, and I, I would add too, um, like past couple of weeks, I've been going to a lot of agile meetups around the world and everything. And I think, like you said, it's a multiplication factor, right? It's not just mm-hmm. your own experiences; you're gaining from all the experiences, all the other agile coaches and scrum masters and and agile people and, and it's just kind of magnifying so that that's cool um that's, yeah cool. so so, you, so a lot of work for senior scrum master explaining scrum throughout the organization um on that note what strategies do you recommend on transforming an agile team so you got a new agile team or they've just been formed maybe they waterfall before maybe they just got together so any strategy you have for transforming them into this new thought mindset that you just mentioned just a second ago? Yeah. Uh, see, actually, uh, this I just was reading in the Internet, actually, uh, just a few days back. And uh, most of the companies who claim that they're agile, I feel that they're not truly agile. Okay. okay. 
In fact, according to you know, Delart and Toysu, who uh, who surveyed over about 10,000, I would I mean, this is what I was just reading it through, uh, more than about 10,000 senior executives, 10% um, of them said that their organization are following uh, strict agile. And the other the other senior executives believe that implementing, ad, you know, implementing agile uh, will do better financially uh, for, you know, for the, you know, like for the organization. Uh -huh. So uh, I feel you know the strategy that I use is um, for for transforming teams and also for the you know for uh, you know for the like you know like for the organization is first I would start with because see actually if you have if you have uh, seen or if you have uh, uh, I think since you're also an agile practitioner we have about as far as I know uh, more than about thirty to forty uh, agile practices uh -huh. that's there. The world, I think we talk about Scrum, we talk about PDD, we talk about uh, business development. Uh, you know, um, BDD, Spotify, less uh, scaled, agile, safe, lean, Kanban. So, where do you start with? You know, how do you start with? With uh, you know, when once you're doing an agile transformation, it's just not you throwing up everything to that. Uh, you know, to, you know, to the organization. So, you know, what you have so many practices available, choose one. So, my strategy would be, uh, I, I would start off with. Uh, the senior management, uh, you know, first find out from them why do why do they really want to go for an agile transformation, or okay. what are the key points that you guys have? Okay, uh, are you uh, are you ready to embrace fail fast? Okay, and what is the outcome that they want to see uh, with respect to transformation? And whenever there's a transformation, uh, the organization will have to take risks. So I I try to explain to the or I not try to ask these kind of questions right from see what the director kind of a level and see how how they respond you know because i have my own list of questionnaires that i ask for and uh, yes i mean like you like when once a senior management is in line with me and then hey you know what yes we really want to transform then uh, what i ask them to do is hey, you know what why don't you identify i call this as quote unquote some of the agile champions okay. uh, which help the which help me or the agile coach and transformation because when once we get the buy-in from the top management, it is their next level of people who would help me or you know help the coach to do the transformation. Okay. So and and in fact, there's a lot of strategy that I use, and I ask them, of course, because when once the management identifies, say about five or ten uh, key people, right, mm -hmm. um, and then probably I just get into the room, and of course, everybody will be having their own um, differences, right? And some of them might say yes some of them might say no and why yes why no of course i i try to brainstorm that and make sure that all the champions who have been identified from their top management do agree for the you know you know, you know do agree for the agile transformation so would you so, say would you say that i think i heard you you asked them why they want to transform into agile it was like one of your first questions right and and do you ask them like what are some of the problems you have and then and look at the different agile techniques frameworks whatever that may solve those problems they have in their organization so it gives you that flexibility is do you do that or yes i do sometimes it's it's okay. just because see i like, like again it's just not just i'm going to use because it all depends you know it all depends on the kind of conversations i have okay with you know, like, you know, like with different people so uh, yes, and, and if, you know, for some of them, yes, I, I, I like I do let them know. At the, I know at the end of the day, what I really insist them is what kind of outcome that you want to see. With okay, this. you're looking for the That's outcome. The you outcome. want to confirm and, you're in uh, sync of what outcome you want to see at the end of this transformation. Exactly. That that is an so, ex excellent perspective on transformation. One, find out why, and then what the ex outcome they're expecting, and find out exactly. the good the good. Uh, a good solution or a way to journey to get there. I like that. Very good. Yeah, sure. Um, and go ahead. Yeah. And of course, you know, you know, you know the things that I also uh, do is I conduct some webinars and press conduct some sessions. Uh, okay. Especially, I'm talking about the you know for the agile champion, so they know what exactly we are planning to transform for their uh, teams. And when once fully agreed from the top management and mm -hmm. also with the agile you know, champions. Then uh, I, I I I always let them. Uh, I always propose this. Let's not go with the big bang approach of hey, you know what? Uh, we have the 
management and also uh, the rest of the people who have agreed for transformation come let's go and transform it company no. wise i always i always say strategy let's not let's go with the very smaller teams okay. because if if the organization is as both see if, it's, see if it really works rather you know what i like that approach too because you think about it doing everything is a very waterfall approach right exactly taking one team or two teams getting them in there see if it fits in their their company I, I actually i like this i might take this on one of my shows so take take it where um you are experimenting with an agile group in there does the does that group survive in that mindset in the company because you may need to change the mindset of the company says i can't make the the way you guys had this set up, it's not going to work the way you had currently set up. And here's what we validated. We're saying uh -huh. the whole company is going to transform. You spend millions and millions of dollars in transforming exactly. the company. Exactly. And it's it's going to fail. I, I actually love that. That is an awesome. I think this right there, that that idea and that you can you can justify the business from a financial standpoint. Right? Exactly. You know, because and, and let's try it out. There's no point in you works. getting into... Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, like a big bang approach. So go to smaller teams, see how they perform and see if they really want to embrace into agile. If they don't yeah. want to, because, you know, the word of mouth spreads, right? Right. And when once, you know, some team is really doing good and they're getting good amount of customer appreciations that, you don't know, the, the ROI is getting increased. Obviously, right. the word of mouth spreads to other teams. You know what? That team is doing something different than what they're doing. And, and, and it makes your job easier. And it makes your job it's easier as a, as a transformation person. Love it. Okay. So, so another question. So I was reading your, I always look at everybody's LinkedIn profile and see what you've done in the past. And, what, and you wrote an article last fall and it's called hiring in a new way. Um, what made you write it and why? And I'm, and I'm just telling you, I'm borrowing the topic. <laughs> I actually thought of a different way of thinking about it. And it's going to be a future show topic on, on hiring a new way because I was thinking in a different way. But what made you write that article and why did you write that article? Again, this is based upon my experience, actually. See, uh, the main reason why I wrote this article was, um, see, we have this traditional interview process, right? Mm -hmm. um, somebody, there's somebody shortlist a resume, some technical lead or a manager will take an interview. And level one, level two, three, four, five, I don't know how, how many levels of interviews that we'll be having. Mm -hmm. And finally, you get an offer letter, hey, you're selected, so and so forth, you get in. And uh, probably at that point of time after you join, uh, you know, the project would have got ended. You would have been asked to work with some, somewhere else or some other project because you've been given an offer to work. Um, the reason why I wrote that was um, rather than somebody interviewing uh, a person, and putting him or her in their project. Mm -hmm. How about you empower the team to choose their person that they want to work with? Okay. Okay. So this that is the whole thought process behind it. So say for example, you want to hire a scrum master or you want a developer or whatever it is. Put the scrum master in in um, the different ceremonies that you that you all conduct with, right? Because you're interviewing like you're interviewing scrum master because. Normally, when once a scrum master into happens, I think he'll be giving his own story of what happened in the past, right. uh, how he did it, and of course, it, it goes on for half an hour to one hour. Instead of that, put him on uh, on the job. Right? Mm -hmm. Of course, he'll be a you know, silent observer. And when you're interviewing a scrum master, probably uh, say there is a planning session that's happening, right? right? Rather than asking how do you do the planning, of course, he'll be having a list of things that he wants to answer. So probably you can question him, uh, like like after the planning, you know, when once he uh, gets into that planning session, probably probably it might be an hour or two or whatever the team takes. So bring him out of the um, you know of the room and try to ask him the questions. What are the anti-agile patterns that you saw during the planning sessions? Okay, and also when once you know, uh, so like what happens is. Uh, the team knows, uh, like, like in case if the team likes the person the way you know that he conducted the planning session or whatsoever, uh, so they know uh, whom they'll be working with, uh -huh. right? They know, you know, they know right from day one. Of course, it all depends whether he's going to join or not join. So I felt that you know if I, you know, I, I think I got a you know, couple of few responses. They liked some of my article on that particular thing. Uh, it, 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 it'll be really good to choose your 
a co-worker by right. yourself or by yourself rather than somebody else choosing for you. How's that? No, I think that's great. I actually, as you were right now, I was actually recording another idea. You gave me two show topics, just so you know. Okay. Just okay. listening, I got another, I got two future show topics on there um, about mm -hmm. that. And I agree with you. I agree with letting because you know. You know who, because you know who will be reporting to us, say, for example, you're hiring a technical lead or your developer. Mm -hmm. You know what is, his strengths and weakness are you know, right from day one. Yeah. He knows to write this piece of code and he is good in that, he's not good in this. Probably well before he joins, you yeah. you know what he's he is good at and what he's not good at. Yeah. So later on, you can also before he joins, you can also come up with the training plan that you want to give him or her. And I think it's really good uh, to to empower the team to choose their teammates. And they also say so there, there's also a little bit of a social connection between the team members, right? So can do they try to tell everybody right from day one you're doing it all wrong? I don't know if that's the right way you want to get. You know, do they do they do they enjoy the you know interested in what the work they're doing and see how they are? And I think I think it goes down to uh, you know uh, workable software over um, documentation, right? Comprehensive documentation. So AI is working software. Okay, how well do you work with the team? Versus, let's see your resume. Let's see your documentation. Let's get into how do you work with the team? Do you ask questions? What do you do? Right. So I, I yeah, love it. I mean, we could do a whole <laughs> show on this topic on why you should let the team come in. <laughs> no, like I just this. I just thought about it that day and it just put it, on the. No, on that the was a great. Day. I think it was a great um, article. Um, okay. okay, so. Tell us an interaction you had with a coachee that made you happy. So you were coaching somebody. What happened that made it like one of the reasons why you keep coaching? You know, because because we just don't coach the coach. We we coach for a reason. We look for something. Give us an example yeah. of an a, a interaction you had that just like, hey, this is why I'm a coach. Sure. Um lots but uh, one thing that really made me happy was of course you know there are many incidents that made me happy but uh, uh my relative's daughter okay um uh, she is uh, uh, she's out of the college of course um mm -hmm. looking for job and uh, she doesn't know uh, uh what goal that she needs to set for herself okay and um in fact, I had I did my uh, I, as I said recently, uh, I think last year or so, I did my NLP coaching. Which you know, with with respect to NLP, they're going to give you a list of frameworks uh, in case for goal setting. There's a framework. In fact, there, there is a conflict. They you know they have certain framework that you can choose. Okay. And this girl okay. came to me and said, uh, Uncle, you know, I just need to set my goal. I don't know, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So. There, in fact, I, uh, it's just like, you know, I, um, uh, it's just like, you know, um, a person who is, uh, who is, who has done his, you know, who is a doctor, like my, my like my dentist, mm -hmm. until he practices, right, right. he'll not be a right. coach. So right. uh, I was, I was fresh out of that coaching with respect to NLP. And this, I got an opportunity for me to help her. So what what I did was I used one of the concepts there called goal setting concept for mm -hmm. it, it can be it can be it can be to anybody. So I worked with her. I sat with her about six to eight sessions, right? Uh, half an hour session, um, if not like all like on a weekly basis. And I tried to have a lot of interactions with her on how uh, how she needs to set a goal. Uh, she had something in my mind. You know what? I want to work in the U.S. in the next right year. right. So everybody will be having their own dream. So there, uh, what they teach you there is, hey, let's set a goal for the next three months of what you want to accomplish. Okay. And the six months and the nine months or 12 or a year. So we did that. I did the coaching sessions for her. She came up with a lot of her ideas of what okay. she wants to do. And six to eight, uh, eight sessions later, mm -hmm. she came back to me with a good plan until this is what I want to do in the okay. next three months. And then a week on week on week basis. Okay. That really, that really, uh, I said, okay, my coaching session really helped her. Good. And I, I'm, of course, of course, you know, I like, I'm in regular touch with her as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's one of the incidents that I changed somebody else's life to uh, change, to have the goal settings for, you know, for, you know, for their career. So that yeah. really made me happy, actually. I kind of do the same. I 
every once in a while I coach people for a little bit of time and then I always touch back to see how they're doing and check with them, you know, follow up and how things are going like you do. So that's cool. So you you felt good. You helped them set their goals and, 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 and continue. Exactly, yeah. So that was good. Decent thing that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So what – and we, we talked about this too. And you had an interview before and you said, so what do you think the difference is between Agile and Scrum? You know, continue our, inter- our questions. We, we had a great discussion yesterday. I wanted to record it, but I didn't I have the recording on because we were just getting to know each other. But tell well, us the I, difference I, between I, yeah. Agile yeah. and Scrum. And, and let's talk about that. What's your thoughts? Sure, sure. In fact, um, this is the wrong, uh, and I, if not wrong, you know, like, like most of the companies or recruiters, they post that on the net, should have strong knowledge and agile methodology. And they talk about uh, practices, that, this, and was looking into it. Actually, uh, this is my own, um, this is my thought about what agile and what is a scrum. Right. In fact, if, if you look into the four manifestos and also the 12 principles of agile, mm-hmm. According to me, it's just a mindset, you know, mindset shift change, right? It's right. all about mindset. Mm-hmm. Interactions, you know, or process, like indigenous interactions or processing tools. It's a mindset, you know, like, you know shift change. Mm-hmm. So according to me, in one word, agile is a mindset, okay? okay? And Scrum, Scrum, according to me, is a process, it is a process framework. There's a set process that the Scrum guide has, has provided, and there's also a framework according to that, Okay. okay. They say that we are supposed to have daily standards and talking about black hole refinement one week before mm-hmm. a review and retro. They're going to prefer like a framework there, mm-hmm. and plus they're going to small process. So, mm-hmm. according to me, agile is a mindset and Scrum is a process framework. If okay. anybody talks about Scrum, is I seen Scrum methodology, agile methodology? No way. There's no methodology there right. at all. It's so, all a process framework. So, do you think you can? And I'm going to ask you a follow-up question. So. Scrum, you have a Scrum team. What Scrum team is going to be more successful? One with an Agile mindset or one without an Agile mindset? See, uh, I would say with an Agile mindset. If you don't have an Agile mindset, you can never be successful in Scrum. Because Scrum is, you know, uh, I don't say it's a subset of Agile. I would say it's like, well, it is because Scrum is one of the framework or or like of Agile, right? We have scaled in a scaled Agile. So it's mm-hmm. also another framework. Mm-hmm. So until that is the base for you, you know. And you know, there's another uh, manifesto which talks about customer collaboration or contract negotiation, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Customer yeah. will not say, "Hey, you know what? This is the six months pay that I'm going to give it. Just get it done. I don't care about how you do it." Right. And yeah, it, it is it is the mindset. If you if the customer doesn't collaborate, you'll never be, you will never be able to you know get succeeded as a child. So. Okay. It's one word. It's a mindset. Good. It's a yeah, it can go so many different ways. That conversation itself can and can you can go so many different ways on how you handle it. And so it's a great take. And I, I like the I like the question because I hear so much. So mm-hmm. in um, Bangalore, just like other parts of the world, you know, you got power outages. Things happen. You know, how do you coach your organizations to handle those unplanned situations? How do you get them ready for that? Because you, no matter where you are in the world, you can have your environment go down one minute and be up another minute. You can have a power outage anywhere. You, you know, how do you, how do you, and, and the COVID-19, right? People are working from out. You don't know whether or not your kids are going to come running through the room and, and scream and yell above your head or what, you know? Um, you know, how do you, how do you help groups? Coach organizations uh, to handle that? See, in fact, what I tell the uh, organization is, Hey, if you're really, really going to uh, strictly follow Agile, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, uh, Scrum is at the framework that that uh, that like, you know that most of them follow. I always let them know: be transparent. Okay, don't hide anything to yourself. In case if there's a power outage for a couple of days, you'll not be able to get the work done. Call it out to the customer. Okay, so transparency. You know, inspect, adapt, and transparency. Those are the three key key pillars of Scrum, right? Okay. So I let them know, if you don't let your customer know of what the pain points that the team is having, you're just trying to uh, really spoil uh, the, relationship, the, you know, the relationship that you have 
between the customer and also you here okay mm -hmm. so what mm -hmm. i let them know is of course everybody is going to hardship it's just not right. you know yeah i know there is a sprint deliverables we have to meet we, we could not meet call it out and give them um, about two or three pain points that the team had and let the customer know what your pain points even he will also understand hey i know that you know the sprint predictability was not good in the past two or three sprints mm -hmm. there was a lot of issues call out those issues rather than talking about uh, the requirements were not clear or team did not understand the acceptance criteria or whatsoever let's not go in that road call out what the actual facts are so the customer also know what the facts are and then he or she can plan a sprint and all like uh, you know like moving forward so because 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 what the uh, what the product owners think is they'll be having some historical data right yeah. so based upon that they're going to keep the velocity on hey this is what my team is doing if you don't do it they're going they'll not you know they'll be missing their what do you say their uh, uh, you know they you know the least time by so i coach them and let them know um, be you know, be transparent yep. let the product owners know what what the pain points the team is going through and yep. then i think everything will be good so no i think that's great I, i think your advice on letting the customer know about these pain points like hey the power out one uh, two days let your customer know you know if it if it comes back on and then six hours or whatever you don't need to do it but like if it's like a day and you know that's that's like 10 percent of your time you exactly. lose 10 see, see, on it's a 10 day sprint yeah see if it's a 10 day sprint and if you lose two days it's 20 percent of your hours yeah, lost yeah yeah then i'm going to get it back yeah how about this to add to that and this is where you and i are engaging in this conversation so and you're making me think right this is why we're doing it so that i'm like thinking so not only do you engage your customer, maybe you sit down and reprioritize what's left in the backlog for that sprint. What do you think about that? See, what I, uh, yes, of course, you know, this has happened. And what I've uh, asked my team members to do is, hey, you know what? Yes, uh, you had a lot of these challenges because of the COVID or whatsoever, internet outages. So what are the spillovers that you have um, that comes out from the previous sprint? Try to knock them off in the in the first week of the sprint rather than carrying forward for multiple sprints mm -hmm. so in that way yes you're not able to uh, deliver as per the committed sprint goal i do agree with that because the team had challenges rather than spilling it over to sprint three four or five try to knock them out when once everything is back okay. make sure because mm -hmm. what i try to coach my team is hey if you have four or five stories or the issues spill over make sure that you close that first rather than taking the new ones because yeah. they would have done about 20 or 70 percent of the work would have been done and 30 would have been left yeah. out so yeah. emphasize on those so that yes you were supposed to deliver on tuesday the customer got it on wednesday or thursday yeah. it's perfectly fine and, and so I would, agile world, yeah and i would just all, add just confirm with the customer that it's still a priority because maybe something on that first thing on that sprint is a lot more priority than something in the last part of the last sprint you never know they might have changed the priority um so that's that's great uh okay continuous learning we talked about learning and what you do and what i do and uh has there been a training class or book that you recently read participated in that you know that you applied your coaching role that you would recommend to people to watch the show oh yeah in fact i'm I've already to, I've, I think I've already answered this in the earlier questions. In fact, I'm a person who always loves to unlearn and learn new things. Okay. So one thing which I would definitely recommend uh, people who are watching this video is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not marketing NLP here at all, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. NLP coaching really helps the Scrum Master or the coach to improvise his coaching skills. <laughs> so I have... I done my uh, like NLP coaching with with one of the good coaches here okay. in Bangalore, and then we okay. come there. It's almost an intensive course for about uh, five days. It yeah. happens. So yeah, I think that's one of the courses that really helped the scrum masters to move ahead and also coach better for the teams. Okay. And 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 in fact, um, you know, I can give you a very small example about conflict resolution. In case if if there are if you are bothered with something, you know, if you're bothered with me for some reason, yeah. It, you know, they've given a very good framework that makes you realize of uh, rather than you know uh, passing the bucks with somebody else okay. so you would rather uh, 
realize yourself and and try to find the answers within you so it's it's really good i think nlp you know people should do so when we when we post up this interview on linkedin definitely comment in the bottom and put some links to it so put your, yeah, yeah so that way people get to know you they can connect with you after the show and build that connection with you in your area too and then they'll learn from more stuff that you have too Sure, sure. As I always say, do I don't, I don't deny any connections unless the, you know, basically unless the connection is like a fake connection. You can tell when you see some of these things. It's like a face per, <laughs> fake persona on the thing. Anyway, cool. Yeah. So definitely, when we post this up on Friday, you know, put a comment in there, put a link maybe to that, and then uh, that way everybody else can see which the the company you're talking about. So that's great. Okay. Sure. Um, with that said, what is your favorite practice? For example, I see in your LinkedIn profile, you write pair programming, TDD, Three Amigos. Um, is there a good place to start with, with your teams? Or how would you introduce this? Would you do an experiment or a practice for, for someone? Well, actually, uh, those things came up while, of course, it's not something written in black and white that mm -hmm. you must in, uh, you do uh, you, you know you like you must follow paper you know paper you know pay programming or tdd or whatever so in fact uh, one of the three amigos meetings that i i really um encouraged the team to do was because you and know, can you uh, talk about three amigo a little bit tell us describe yes, sure, what it sure. is actually what what the three amigo does is simple say you have a complicated story uh, which involves it's really complicated and a lot of, a lot more discussions needs to happen uh, with respect to the uh, technical architecture, with respect to understanding the stories, and with respect to testing. So what the 3 Amigo does is uh, you have a product owner uh, because you have a, a complicated feature that needs mm -hmm. to be developed. And those three people will be closely looped and they will be working on that particular, they'll be working on uh, developing that complicated feature. Okay. You'll be having uh, a technical architect there who will be giving some technical suggestions. You'll be having a senior developer there. Plus a tester who are dedicated. Uh, that means, the, and, and that's the reason why I said three amigo. So you know, three people or three or four. It all depends upon that you know the you know the number of people. It is that core group who will be working on developing a complicated feature, okay. and those three or four people uh, will make sure that that feature has been developed amongst themselves. Okay. So any okay. of the comp because of course you know some of the stories are really complicated wherein uh, you require high expertise, right or High technical mm -hmm. experts and, mm -hmm. and probably you might need some lot of um, uh, like automation testing effort and so on and so forth. Okay. So yeah, three amigo is what I experimented so, it. It worked fine. So you see, when you see an ex, uh, kind of complicated solution where there may be a lot of questions and you want some a lot more interaction in the team, you would a lot more interactions. It's just not on the refinement day that they they try to refine it. Yeah, they have a closed loop and they try to interact either on okay. Slack or regular call so that i introduced it and of course paid programming we all know about it uh, it's, it's good to develop each other's skills among the developers so they both work on the same code yeah i introduced three amigos one of my teams years ago and uh, they loved it the product owners loved it They're like i'm up for it man this is great i can get you all the answers and be done in like five minutes i mean they enjoy, really enjoyed the three amigo process okay so here's a special one so tell us something that that about yourself that's not in your LinkedIn profile. So share with us something about yourself that's not in LinkedIn, not on your resume, that we should ask you about when when we meet you. <laughs> Some of the tricky question. What's there? Not there in my LinkedIn profile. Okay, it doesn't say when it, I got married. What makes you you who you are, right? <laughs> no, uh, my LinkedIn profile doesn't talk about my, of course, it's, it's a professional, uh, network and of course we cannot mm -hmm. talk about some personal things says that's not the inner profile is when i got married 20 years back and i have two kids doesn't talk about it and okay. both of them are in the college right now and yeah I, uh, of course uh, uh, in fact i am the person who would like to uh, travel a lot in fact i, I, I like of course uh, on every weekends i don't stay at home i'll be roaming around across bangalore i'm i really want to explore myself uh, you know you know going out so yeah that's one of the things which is not been my resume 
So I'm I'm, I'm a travel freak actually. Let me tell you. Okay, you're a travel freak. I'll get all the time. So freak. so tell us something. And now that this is not this is my pop up question. So tell us something in Bangalore that you travel to that that if ever anybody ever visit Bangalore and never been there that they should go see. Lot of places. See, it's of course Bangalore is becoming now a cosmopolitan city, and of okay. course it's really uh, uh, close to Bangalore. I would say a place like Mysore, which is it's been a bit of a good place to see, and of course a lot of tourists will do visit Mysore, uh, which is one of the ancient cities of, uh, of India. And plus, there are a lot of uh, nearby places like some hill stations that 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 they can visit. Okay. But particularly in Bangalore, I think it's lost right now. Because a lot more people coming in from different mm. different places mm. in different different countries, so uh, not that much places to see. But of course, there are some uh, big museums and parks that they can visit to during their uh, free time. So you like your free time to just explore the world, right? So that's cool. All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to do this interview with us and share some of your your wisdom and your exploration of the agile mindset with uh, listeners of the Five AM Master Scrum Show. And mm -hmm. uh, just remind everybody, ring the bell. You'll get notices sure. when we get interviews like that. And, uh, you know, thank you very much. And uh, thank you. And that, and thank you. Thank you so much. And, and, you know, thanks for your time. Of course, you're talking to me on Sunday morning, of course, and the evening for us. And it's really good. I really had a good experience uh, talking to you. And, of course, some of the questions that you asked for me, I think probably I'll try to use those questions for in case if I'm interviewing some of us other scrum masters as well. Yeah. and try to understand from you know, from their perspective as well cool cool great all right all right thank you thank you so much all and right we'll catch up later yeah.